Have you ever wondered what all those signs and signals meant on the Toronto subway system? Let's take a ride on the Toronto subway and see what signals we can find. First, we must understand how the system works. The entire subway system is divided into blocks, each of which is protected by a signal. Each signal indicates to the operator whether they can proceed into that block. There are two main types of signals, interlocking signals and automatic signals. Automatic signals contain one head and three lenses. They control trains based solely on the absence and presence of a train in any given block. If the block ahead is occupied, the signal would indicate stop, a single red aspect. An amber aspect would indicate that the next signal is currently red. And finally, green would tell the operator that the track ahead is clear. As you will see later on, there is further protection for each block acting as a buffer between trains. Interlocking signals are used in locations where train routing may conflict with one another such as at switches and crossovers. These signals are controlled by both a tower controller and train positioning. They prevent situations such as routing trains in and out of crossovers at the same time. These signals can be identified with the letter X followed by the numbers on the signal. An interlocking signal contains two heads with three lenses in each. The top head is identical to an automatic signal, indicating the status of the track ahead. The lower head indicates the direction. On this train approaching Downs View, we can see the green in the lower head, indicating the train is set to proceed on the normal route, which is straight ahead. Amber in the bottom head indicates the train will proceed on the diversion route, crossing over. Green over green indicates proceed at normal speed on the main route. The track ahead is clear. You may have noticed several lenses below the lower head. These are reserved for call-ons and timed blocks. Here, both platforms at Downsview are occupied. The double red on the interlocking signals tells the operator to stop and stay. But wait a second. What is the flashing amber aspect? It is a call-on, which can be set by a tower controller to give special permissions to pass a double red signal. In this case, the call-on is automatic, indicated by the flashing amber. The auto call-on is used on the X-18 approaching an end terminal to keep trains moving when both platforms are occupied. A manual call-on is always issued by the tower controller and can be identified by the steady amber under the double red. The function of bypassing an interlocking signal is known as a manual key-by. They are used when trains need to be moved into an occupied block or a signal is malfunctioning and unable to clear on its own. Now, what happens when an operator decides to ignore a red aspect? Since trains share a track in each direction, that would be a safety hazard. Luckily, the signal system can enforce signal violations with a trip arm or train stop. The trip arm is a T-shaped metal device located at track level beside each signal. Watch how the trip arm is in the up position when the signal is red and down when the signal is not. If a train passes a red signal, the train will be tripped. The brakes of the train will be put into emergency, forcing the train to a complete stop. Can a train proceeding at full speed be stopped by a trip arm just like that? No. In this example, a train is occupying block 121. Signal 115 shows an amber aspect. Signal 117, 119, and 121 all show a red aspect. This is accomplished with overlapping control length, known as overlapped distance control. The control length of both signals 117 and 119 extend into the occupied block 121. This is to allow for a worst-case braking scenario. 
a train going at maximum speed with a maximum load and the worst possible rail conditions. Remember, a red aspect on an automatic signal indicates stop, while a double red on an interlocking signal indicates stop and stay. The difference? A double red is absolute. You may not pass in any circumstance. The only exception is through a call loan which involves both operator and tower controller. For an automatic signal, you could always drive the trip arm down by creeping up to it very slowly. This is known as an automatic key buy. But of course, if you do this without permission, you could get into serious trouble. The last type of signal we will discuss is the grade time signal. These signals are used to enforce train speeds throughout the system. This is accomplished by only clearing if the train has spent a satisfactory amount of time on that block. The signal would clear from red to a more favorable signal, amber or green. The single lunar aspect below an interlocking or automatic signal indicates that the upcoming block is timed. An amber paired with a lunar aspect tells the operator that the next signal is only red due to great timing. We know the signal is about to clear or time out when the red aspect starts to flash. In the event the train goes over the speed limit, the signal will not clear in time, tripping the train. Signs with the letters P, S, O, and 6 give the brake or power settings to be used on certain areas on the line. P stands for parallel or full throttle. S or series is used before a switch and other reduced speed areas such as on tight turns and their approach to a terminal station. O stands for off power and tells the operator to maintain constant speed or set the throttle to coast position. Finally, pairs of sixes are located at each station. The first six indicate where to begin brake application and the second where to stop the train. Our journey has come to an end. We hope you have a better understanding of the signs and signals used wayside by the Toronto Transit Commission. We have arrived at Terminal Station. Thank you for joining us.